Welcome. A couple of announcements. Uh, ad board meeting for August has been moved to the 25th at 6 p.m. And a reminder that Party in the Park has been moved to September 11th from 2 to 4 due to mosquitoes. Do we have any other announcements? All right, birthdays or anniversaries? Which had it? Birthdays or anniversaries? <laughs> Where is he? What are you doing? But just to you, because he's not here. <laughs> All right, then let's join together in singing our gathering hymn, number 103, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Children of God, rejoice in your Maker. Sing songs and hymns, old and new. Celebrate with voices and instruments, with praise and prayers. Open your eyes to the life-giving presence of Jesus Christ. For God is always here, among us and within us, bringing new life to all things. Let us praise God together. Let's join in hymn number 61, Come, Thou Almighty King.
we have any joys or concerns today? Yes. And I'm so sorry about all that running. Okay. <laughs> Thanks all kinds, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Which is, nobody out there probably does. <laughs> you do too, you big liar. I don't need your dog. <laughs> Y'all are in church. I just want you to know that. <laughs> Unspoken request. Oh, horrible. I'll remember it when you know it's past, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll just throw it out. Let's just say that there's a prayer that I know of that I can't think of right now that y'all need to pray for. So God knows, and thank goodness God knows. Because I can't remember. All right, let's be in a time of prayer. Almighty God, in whose name we put our trust, we sing praises to you. You are our refuge in trouble and worthy of all glory and rejoicing. You have cared for your faithful people in times of trial. When we have been in danger, you have provided our, our protection and delivered us from the hands of those who would destroy us. And yet we continue to doubt your power. We accept your grace in vain and we become afraid, knowing that our own resources are never sufficient. For doubting your power, for failing to recognize you in our midst, forgive us, O oh, merciful God and make us live. Your apostles of old were upheld by genuine love and the strength of your Holy Spirit. Support us now with the same Spirit that in all things we may be rejoicing in your work. Visit anew those who suffer various trials. To those who are dying, give peace. To those who are suffering in body or mind, give release. Meet the needs of the poor. Drive away those things which destroy the soul. Lord, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Grant us the things we ask, not as we deserve, but as you love us. For we ask them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Join in our prayer hymn number 463, Lord, speak to me. For we know that if the earthly tent which is our house is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven, inasmuch as we, having put it on, will not be found naked. For indeed, while we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed, so that which is mortal will be swallowed up by life. Now he who brought this about in us is God, who gave to us the Spirit as a pledge. Therefore, from now on we recognize no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in, new, is in Christ, he is a new creation. The first things have passed away. Behold, new things are brought into being. The word of God for the people of God. Will you join with me in the prayers of the Holy Spirit? Come, Holy Spirit, 
fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've been thinking a lot about how we all have this tendency to look back on the days of our childhood and youth and think how good they were. Anybody with me on that one? And how we wish that, oh, if only today's world could be just like that. And if we're completely honest with this, first of all, if we're completely honest, we know that every generation does this. And if we want to be brutally honest with ourselves, if we look back historically on the times of our youth and childhood with the eyes of an adult, we realize that those times weren't so good, really. I think we think they were good because we had absolutely no responsibility in it. We just got to be kids. The only thing that we had to worry about, well, you know, when they came about especially, was being home when the street lights turned on. If your mother hollered at you that it was time for dinner, you came in for dinner. If she gave you a chore, you did it. Or not, and paid the consequences. But that, you know, really. And who wouldn't long for those days? Because, let's be honest, when adulthood hits, and it, it usually hits suddenly, we realize that we live in a different world than we did when we were younger. Our world as a whole and our individual worlds fall apart and are recreated all of the time. Sometimes it's just simple things that change our worlds. Graduations, marriages, children, empty nests, retirement. Sometimes those changes, as simple as they may be, come rapidly before we thought they would. I know Don and I experienced that. Married when we're 19, and by the time we're 20, we're parents. That's a rapid change. Sometimes those changes are seriously difficult to deal, deal with. An injury that lays us up or is permanent. The death of a loved one, a divorce, a diagnosis of cancer, a pandemic. And suddenly the world that was is no more. It just isn't. And the fact that this reality exists is attested to numerous times in Scripture. Isaiah 65, God says, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the first things will not be remembered or come to mind. In Genesis 1, the literal translation of the very first birth, birth verse is in a beginning. 
when God began to create the heavens and the earth. And as you go through each day, it's not the first day, it's a first day. A second day. Even today's text. Behold, the first is gone. The first things have passed away. New things are brought into being. The word there for brought into being is uh, gunamai, which looks in English like G-Y-N-O-M-A-I. It is where we get our word gynecology. So it's literally new things are being born. And we become a new creation. But here's the funny thing about the human brain. You've all heard the saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. It's true because as we age, our brains get, for lack of a better term, rigid. It's harder for us to form new connections in the brain between cells. And so if you, as you age, say, hey, I'm going to learn a new language, you find it far more difficult to learn a new language than you would if you were very much younger. Or if you say, hey, I'm going to learn how to play guitar. Good luck with that. You, you can. It's going to take you a long time. And because of this kind of uh, hardening of our brains, which ends up sometimes yielding to a hardening of the heart, instead of recognizing that things and worlds and even concepts of heaven are created and destroyed and recreated all the time. But instead of recognizing that anymore, we push them into these little singular events and just wait for them. So there's one conversion, one death, one afterlife. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody were to ask me about my conversion moment, I'd have to ask about which one. Because, you know, there's always that time when you're younger and you're like at camp or some retreat and you, and you sing some song and, you, and then you go, oh, hey, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. That might happen again when you're in your teens or something. And before you know it, you have to start recommitting yourself every year. And by the time you're in your 40s or 50s, you have to do it twice a day. And I get it. I get our tendency to push these things into one moment, one thing, one afterlife, one thing in the future especially. And so does Paul when he says that we groan in these tents and we feel burdened all the time. At least it seems that way. And all we want is the timeless ease of heaven. But the reality is we are constantly passing by and through the first things and new things are constantly being born, being created. We literally become a new creation with every major change in our lives. We die to the old things and we are reborn or recreated into our new worlds, our new understandings of what the world is like and even what heaven is like. And we get, and we cling to those structures. We definitely cling to those structures. There are things that when I think about, 
uh, in heaven that there are scriptures that say, nope, that's not the way it is, that I'm like, yeah, it is. I don't care what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, how many of you see yourself being with your spouse or something for the rest of eternity in heaven? Well, that doesn't speak highly of anybody. And yet, Jesus says, you're not given in marriage in heaven. <laughs> See, I don't know. I know what I want. <laughs> I know what I want right now. But it's definitely different than what I wanted when I was much younger. And in a couple decades, it'll probably be much different then. And the, and the funny thing about this is, is when, when the old things are passing, we do not handle it well. It is not pretty. We flail and we fight and we go kicking and screaming, trying our darndest to, have, to not die. And all you have to do is look at history. Look at the history of the church to recognize that. I mean, there are still some denominations out there, no women preachers. Because Paul said, women, you don't talk in church. If you've got a question, ask your husband when you get home. I already got one at you, and I know that there are others going, you better not even think about telling me to do that. <laughs> there are times when blacks couldn't be ordained. And now look at us struggling with whether or not gays can be ordained. Look at us. If that is not flailing and fighting and kicking and screaming, against something old passing away. I don't know what it is. Think about just yourselves. How many of you tried to diet recently? How'd you handle that one? How many days did you last on the new exercise program? How much pain did it take you on that first workout to go, no, that's it. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> Or, if we don't kick and scream against it, we just lay there in our beds in a motionless dollar just waiting for the end to come. Woe is me. Life is over. Just let me die. I don't know how many times I've heard that recently. And it really, it is, it is a rare person that seems to stand in front of us and just embrace the passing of the old and welcoming in the birth of the new. Our fighting against the God who is always creating, always bringing new things into being, really betrays us. We reveal our distrust in God, thinking we can do things better. And we wallow in hopelessness rather than hope. Think back on your childhood again that you wish you could go back to. Think about what the world was really like back then. Do you want another world war? Do you want more lynchings? Do you want another Vietnam? Another Cold War? Is that what we really want? Because that's the stuff that was going on at the time. It it didn't hit us because we didn't have to address it ourselves because we were kids.
it's important, I think, that we, you know, when we take these words like that Paul throws at us every now and then, like if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The first things have passed away, and behold, new things are born. You know, it's important for us to understand that that's not a, a one-time thing. Tell me that a person who has gone through chemotherapy and gets and finally gets the notice that they're in remission is not a new creation. And I think it's important for us to see these things not as moments that pass and are eternal, but instead see them as constant. Worlds coming and going, creations coming and going, selves coming and going all the time. And I think it would behoove us as individuals and in our lives together even to examine what is dying that we are fighting against tooth and nail. And then ask ourselves, what new creation do we keep from being born? Amen. Let's join in our closing song number 581, Lord who loves through humble service. Christ, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and the power of God the Father. May all your worlds that fall apart 
be born again as new creations with new heavens and new earths. Amen. Amen.